If you were a loving wife, what would be the worst news you could get from a private detective about your husband? Is that right? You'll have another thing coming when you hear Including Murder on Theater 5. Terrible having to do this, Mr. Norman. I understand, Mrs. Bennett. I mean, going to this length to spy on my husband. Well, these things are never pleasant. But if there's something to what you suspect, you're better off knowing about it. I must ask you a couple of questions. Of course. The woman's name. Well, it'll simplify my investigation. I don't know her name. Any idea where she lives? No. What about a, a description? No, I, I haven't seen her. You've never seen this other woman? No. No. But you're sure it's another woman? Oh, what else can it be, Mr. Norman? When you're married to a man for ten years and all of a sudden he changes, begins to act evasive, is annoyed with me, secretive, neglectful. Well. Most likely, Mrs. Bennett, what you suspect is completely untrue. I don't feel bad about coming to see me. It'll be worth it if what I find out relieves your mind. You're very kind, Mr. Norman. A photograph of your husband will help. Oh, yes, I have one in my bag. And his place of business? It's the Inter-Allied Import-Export Company, and William is a vice president. They're in the Atlas building. I'll call you at your home the minute I have something to report. Hi. Oh, hi. I've been on pins and needles looking out my window waiting for you to get home. Naturally. I no sooner turn away than you pull right into the driveway. Oh, well, come on in, Jenny. I... I had to go into town for a while. Margie, what's today? Hmm? What day is it? The big day, Margie. <laughs> now, don't tell me you've forgotten. Our anniversaries. Oh, is it today? Oh, usually the husbands forget. <laughs> yes. I'm so sorry it completely slipped my mind. Hmm, well, don't apologize. This is no day for apologizing. The night is for celebrating. Ken picked up four theater tickets for tonight. Now, I want you and William to join us. Oh, oh first dinner, then... Oh, now, please, Margie. We have something good to celebrate. <laughs> you know, I never lived next door to a neighbor before who happened to be married the same year and day I was married. Now, come with us tonight. Oh, Jenny, it isn't me, you know that. You're very kind to invite us. But you also know that I am never sure lately when William gets home. Well, call him right now. Before anyone else has a chance to... Go ahead. Say it, Jenny. Before someone else has a chance to make an appointment with him. For... Oh, I, I didn't mean it that way. I meant that... Oh, the devil with what I meant. Oh, come out with us tonight. It'll do you both a world of good. Well, it'll certainly do me a lot of good. And it might even have the same effect on William. That a girl. Now get on that phone and... Well, excuse me. Hello? It's me, Margie. Oh, William. I was just going to call you. Forget about dinner for me tonight. Did you hear what I said? I heard. Business appointment. Oh, aren't there any times during the day when you can make business appointments? But I'll be quite late, so don't wait up for me. All right? No, it is not all right. Jenny is here with me. She and Ken invited us to dinner and the theater tonight. I can't tonight. But it's our anniversary. Marjorie, I'm sorry. I just can't make it tonight. But Jenny already has the tickets for I us. I can't help that. Tell her to mind her own business anyway. William, are you sure... That yours is only a business appointment? Well, I'm sorry, Jenny, but these are the facts of my married life lately. I know 
it's an awkward time, Mrs. Bennett. But I thought it'd be better for you to come to my office rather than for me to go to your home. I understand, Mr. Norman. Please sit down. Well, I, I don't mind standing. Uh, please, Mrs. Bennett, sit down. You sound pretty ominous. Do you know a man by the name of Ed Garson? No. He's short, dumpy, a very mean face. You can't mistake him. Neither the name nor the description rings a bell. Would your husband know such a man? Well, perhaps. Certainly I don't know all of my husband's business associates. William did call me earlier to say that he had a business appointment tonight. Well, I'm he talking about wouldn't... an afternoon meeting, Mrs. Bennett. It took place... Uh, let me read from my notes. William Bennett left his office at the Atlas Building, 2 p.m., took a cab to South Street. South Street? That's a terrible section. It is, Mrs. Bennett. I followed your husband into a bar on South and Willow Street, and there he was met by Ed Garson. Mr. Norman, just what are you getting at? I wish I could be absolutely sure. Well, what does that mean? Well, knowing what I do about Ed Garson, I can't imagine your husband having any business dealings with him other than... Other than what? Something illegal. Do you mean criminal? Not the way you mean criminal, Mrs. Bennett. Ed Garson is a professional gunman. He has a reputation as a hired killer. Unless I'm completely off base, your husband hired Ed Garson to kill someone. Maybe you. How much do I owe you, Mr. Norman? Consider what I say seriously, Mrs. Bennett. How much do I owe you? At least consider the possibility. Did you hear their conversation? No, I, I couldn't get close enough for that. But I did see your husband diagram something on a piece of paper which Garson put in his pocket. I also saw your husband give Garson some money. I don't ignore these facts, Mrs. Bennett. No matter how incredible they may sound, your life might depend Here, on... Here, this ought to satisfy even you. <laughs> Is your husband home, Mrs. Bennett? No. Didn't I pay you enough, Mr. Norman? May I come in, please? I have nothing more to talk to you about. Well, I have something more to talk to you about. Well, come in if you must. Hmm. A lovely room, Mrs. Bennett. It's comfortable. Yes. Doesn't that rifle over the mantel look a little out of place in here? William used to enjoy hunting. He keeps it there in case of burglars. Loaded? Well, I think so, yes. Mr. Norman, there was no need for you to come here. I thought that we had finished our business to your satisfaction. Not at all to my satisfaction. You paid me too much for one thing, and the more I think about what I've seen and what I see now, the more I'm convinced you need police protection. Oh, Mr. Now, Norman. listen to me. You said your husband had a business appointment tonight. I did. Well, I got to thinking maybe you'd made a mistake. Maybe he said afternoon and you thought he said tonight. It's just possible. So I was willing to change my mind about the purpose of his afternoon meeting with Garson simply on the basis of a misunderstood word, which is why I'm here now. Believe me, I was hoping to find your husband home, but he isn't, and I'm convinced now he won't be. I wish Because he you... arranged with Garson not to get home until after... Mr. Norman, please. Can't you understand I saw your husband make a deal with a professional gunman? Open your eyes, Mrs. Bennett. Garson's no thief, no gambler. He's a killer. Oh. It's his business. Can you think of any other reason, business, social, or otherwise, why a man like William Bennett meets a man like Ed Garson secretly and in the worst part of town? You are very kind to be so concerned about me, but I just... Why? Why would William want such a thing done to me? Is he in some kind of trouble? Well, not that I know of. Money, perhaps? I don't think so. What about insurance policies? Well, we have them on both our lives. How much? Oh, $50,000. But this is fantastic. A good friend of mine is on the police force. No. Now, absolutely no. How can you suggest such a thing? William has a responsible position with his company. I can't jeopardize his position. But you can put your own life in jeopardy. Well, I don't believe it. I won't believe it. I'll have a talk with William. It may be too late for talking. Let me call I my... said no, Mr. Norman, and I mean no. And I insist that you do not go to the police. I can't promise that. All right, Mr. Norman. I hired you. I'm hiring you again. You keep that money that you were going to return to me. And now I am entitled to your professional silence. Please don't tie my hands this way. I insist. I will settle this matter with my husband in my own way. I'll keep phoning you. Well, I would rather you didn't. 
I am grateful for your kindness and your concern, but there must be some other explanation. I wish I could feel that, Mrs. Bennett. Well, cheer up, Mr. Norman. At least you're right about one thing. It is not another woman. <laughs> Leave it here by the fireplace for now. You're, uh, you're home early. Yes, uh, I, uh, I got through sooner. Have you eaten? No, uh, uh well, uh, yes, uh, I, I'm not hungry. Uh, but what time is it? 8.30. William, what's wrong? Oh, well, what should be wrong? Sit down, please, will you? I'm glad you're home early. I want to talk to you. About what? About us. Oh, I, I'm sorry I hung up on you this afternoon. And I, I, I'm very sorry about the anniversary. Well, maybe it's just as well. We've got a chance now to talk to each other. Uh, I'll be right back. Where are you going? I'll get some cigarettes. But I thought you gave up smoking. Well, I, I did, but... Oh, William. William, you're so tense. Please, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing is wrong. Oh, yes, something is wrong. Please, will you confide in me, William? I know we haven't been as close as a husband and wife should have been in these past few months. And I'm not blaming you as much as I blame myself. I can't remember when I've called you dear or darling. It's always been William. That sounds pretty cold, doesn't it? Now, I know that you're in some kind of trouble. I can see that you are, and I want to help. Please, dear, don't turn me away now. <laughs> Margie. Oh, darling. Oh, why haven't you talked this way to me before? Yes, yes, I'm in trouble, a lot of trouble, but bad trouble. I've been going crazy trying to figure a way out. Is it another woman? Another woman? No, no. What makes you say that? Well, then it's only money. And if it's only money, darling, then that's nothing. $30,000 worth of nothing I stole from the company. Oh. $30,000. Why? What for? Gambling and losing. Nothing but losing and losing. It's been like a nightmare. I kept telling myself I'd just borrow this much and that much and just this much more. I was going to put it all back. But everything I bet on went sour. Now, I'm scared. I can't keep the auditors from finding out. I lose everything, everything I worked so hard for. But why gambling? Well, what else was there to do? I, I, don't, I don't mean it that way anymore, Margie. Or now that you... Shh. It's all right. It's all right. It's still only money. And we can borrow it somewhere. Oh, I've tried a hundred places in the past two months. There's no one left to borrow from. Well, there is the policy on my life. Oh, don't say such a thing. Maybe I wished it, but I, I, I've been out of my mind with worry. I, I don't want it that way now. Not when I know you'll stick by me. Of course I'll stick by you. I don't know, maybe it has to be this way to bring us together again. I have friends. We'll raise the money. What time is it? Oh, never mind. Margie, don't move from here. I'll be right back. William! Hello? Norman, Mrs. Bennett. Oh, I'm so glad you called. I'm glad you're there to get my call. Nonsense, Mr. Norman. You will be glad to know that your fears were completely unjustified. Look. I've got my friend, Lieutenant Fax. No, 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 no. I just told you. There's no need for that. William and I have talked things over, and it's only a little money trouble, and we can weather that. Are you sure? 
sure? Positively. It's only money, and money is nothing. Where's your husband now? Well, that isn't important. Now, please, please, Mr. Nolan. I do appreciate your concern, but there's no need for it anymore. William and I will be all right, and there is simply nothing, nothing at all to what you suspect. Well, if you say so. I do say so. And thanks again for your kindness, and now I've got to say goodbye. Yes. yes. Good, goodbye, Mrs. Bennett. Come on, Marjorie. We've got to go. For where? Save the questions. There's no time. No time for what? Please, Margie. He'll be here any minute. Oh. Who? Ed Garson? Yes, Garson. Then you did hire him to kill me. I told you I did. You did not. All right. Not in so many words. But there's no time to quibble about that. It's almost nine. <laughs> oh, William. Is this my anniversary present? Can't you believe I've changed my mind? Yes, I wanted the insurance money, but I don't want it that way anymore. Now, I just tried to call Garson. He's gone. He's on his way here. Please, please, Margie, we've got to leave right now. And how do I know that you are not bringing me to him? Oh, please, please believe me. Everything's changed. I swear it. As long as I know you'll stand by me, I'm not afraid of facing anything. I tell you, I've been out of my head. I, I even had a crazy plan worked up to kill Garson after he killed you. I'd make it look like he was a burglar. I was mad, out of my head. We've got to go now, Margie. Garson will be here any minute. Wrong ah. tense, chum. Garson is here. Me and my little gun here says nobody goes anywhere. Now, listen, Garson. You talk only when I say you talk, right? Why, what a real nice scene that was. Just like in the movies. Good sound. Good picture. You got my interest, chum. Garson, you crumb. You punk. Pull a double cross on me. On me. It, it, it was all a mistake. The biggest mistake you ever made, chum. You got your money. There's no harm done. I call the whole thing off. Keep the money. Floor plan and everything. No wonder you wanted it done here in the house. Where'd you figure to hit me? Now, please, Garson. You've got the money. There's no need to go through with it. Lee! I said, where were you going to give it to me? And I'm not asking a third time. I, I don't know. Wherever I happen to see. Like you just happened to come home, huh? Yes, yes. Why, you lousy... Please, Mr. Garson. You must leave us alone. Lady, I'm going to leave you both alone. No. Oh, no! Drop, Margie. Drop to the floor! No. You shot her! You shot her! And you too, chum! Murderer! Mr. Bennett! Mrs. Bennett! Oh, oh, I'm... Margie, you're hurt. You're badly hurt. It, 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 it's not fair. It's not fair. You'll be all right. Please be all right. I tried to warn her. I tried to warn her. You'll be all right. Please be all right. Now, if I can just find what I want. Uh-huh. What's that? That piece of paper. A diagram of the house. I found it on Garson's body. A diagram of the house which you gave him. What are you talking about? You hired Garson to kill your wife. No. Don't tell me no. I saw you. Yes, I hired him, yes, but I changed my mind. You've got to believe me. Ask my wife. She'll tell you. Margie, tell him I changed my mind. It's so unfair. So unfair. Oh, don't leave me now, Margie. You've got to tell him I changed my mind. Open your eyes, Margie. He's dead, Bennett. Oh. And I'll see you get the book thrown at you. Everything the law calls for, including murder. <laughs> Presented including murder, written by Sam.